Hello again, and thank you for watching our videos. Yes, stress affects hyperacusis is a decreased threshold to discomfort from sound. Tinnitus. There are increasing numbers of individuals complaining about the combination of tinnitus and hyperacusis, which significantly affects their lives in numerous annoying and unpleasant ways. Typically, they find themselves desperate, constantly searching for help. This combination proves to be much more challenging in terms of symptoms compared to tinnitus alone. Hyperacusis alone can be an extremely annoying condition, preventing sufferers from nearly every opportunity to lead a normal or even close to normal life. With tinnitus added to the mix, the situation becomes significantly worse. It's important to be informed that in most cases, sufferers can find successful help. We aim to convey this message of hope to everyone watching this video. Please remember that we have confidence in our work, having dealt with numerous patients for over 15 years. Our extensive working experience, coupled with acquired knowledge, validates our opinions and renders them helpful to all individuals watching this video while coping with hyperacusis and tinnitus symptoms. Neuroscience is the key to understanding tinnitus and hyperacusis, as we have emphasized in many of our videos before. In her definition, Susan Gold wrote about a crucial feature of what we understand reading her paper is the neurophysiological model, which is that a number of systems in the brain are involved in the emergence of tinnitus. The cochlea and auditory periphery play only a secondary role. These concepts were first proposed in the 1980s by Pavel Yastrebov, and the clinical protocol for evaluation and treatment based on the neurophysiological model was implemented at the University of Maryland Medical Center in 1990. As this treatment was refined, it became known internationally as tinnitus retraining therapy, or TRT. We take pride in our association with Professor Yastrebov, and based on our research and many years of experience in using TRT in our treatments and therapies, we are staunch supporters who can attest to the exceptional value of his research and work. When you look at the screen and see a picture showing some parts of the brain which can be easily recognized, and based on Professor Pavel Yastrebov's neurophysiological model of tinnitus, are known to be involved in the chronic tinnitus condition or even temporary tinnitus. As we can see in the picture, the central part or element represents Professor Yastrebov's tinnitus model. It is called the limbic system. This part of the brain takes a very active role in presenting tinnitus symptoms to our conscious awareness. It's clearly shown in our pictures due to its significance and its role in the proper functioning of our brain, which sometimes leads to it being referred to as a separate brain. The limbic system is often recognized as the most important part of our brain involved in producing tinnitus symptoms, strength and awareness changes, especially when we discuss severe or catastrophic levels of chronic tinnitus. As science tells us, the limbic system supports many different functions, including emotion, behavior, motivation, long-term memory, and others. This part of the brain plays a crucial role in various brain functions, especially those related to our basic survival instincts and the fight-or-flight response. As we mentioned earlier, this is also a part of the brain that can make a drastic difference in how our tinnitus is and how it behaves. That's why, as we try to understand the true nature of tinnitus and why it behaves in certain ways, it's essential to know the role and significance of the limbic system. It influences whether we are aware or unaware of the presence of tinnitus, which can range from being extremely annoying and loud to less noticeable, and at the end making it challenging for us to pinpoint. What makes the difference is this understanding that the brain's limbic system is responsible for most emotional processing. Individuals with an anxiety disorder are known to have abnormally high activity levels in these areas. Now, please remember that most tinnitus sufferers experience high levels of stress and anxiety caused by tinnitus presence. On the other hand, any additional source of anxiety or stress present in our lives is known to have a dramatic effect on the awareness and strength of tinnitus-related symptoms 
by increasing what we could call a basic level of the limbic system activity to a much higher level. So what that means for us is that not only stress and anxiety are known to be responsible for 75% of tinnitus onset, but in fact, it's a combination of what we could call a based load of stress, which we can experience in our life daily in addition to stress and anxiety caused by a tinnitus presence, this mix can be very devastating to the tinnitus sufferer. This is why scientific research tells us that anxiety and tinnitus are linked to many conditions. People with tinnitus often live lives filled with high levels of stress and anxiety, affecting them on a daily basis. Constant tinnitus by itself, which is nothing but this abnormal activity in some parts of the brain, can disturb in many ways an individual's life and cause difficulty sleeping and focusing, but it can also trigger worsening episodes of anxiety and depression, as some other factors can even greatly increase this abnormal activity. So to have this good understanding of the chronic tinnitus condition, we need to remember that our actions can make all the difference. Our attitude toward tinnitus and emotional response can be as negative as expected, or we can try to learn to be calm and more relaxed by understanding the nature of tinnitus. Now, we hope you can understand why we frequently discuss DRT or tinnitus retraining therapy and why we strongly believe in its effects and value when administered properly by a truly professional tinnitus treatment clinic. Through a combination of DRT and cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, Along with a highly personalized dose of psychology using many different tools, even cases of tinnitus and hyperacusis at catastrophic levels, as measured by the Tinnitus Handicap Inventory, available on our website, can be successfully treated in almost all cases. Unfortunately for many individuals dealing with a combination of hyperacusis and tinnitus, effective treatments can be quite challenging and demand a high level of expertise. As mentioned in previous videos, it is important to note that even tinnitus retraining therapy alone requires a considerable level of proficiency. While concepts like sound therapy and habituation are well known, finding a professional with comprehensive knowledge in these areas isn't always easy in the real world. It's similar to grappling with any complex task. We might have a basic understanding, but in reality, we may only be familiar with some concepts or have general knowledge. For example, habituation is one of the key elements of tinnitus retraining therapy. We all know what habituation is. It seems to be something so simple to explain, but what about habituation used in tinnitus retraining therapy? The introduction of the concept of habituation to the tinnitus signal was a turning point in tinnitus treatment. A second important clinical contribution by Professor Pavel Yastrobov was the assessment of sound sensitivity. Again, unfortunately, this is not a part of the standard hearing test designed to validate the tested patient's need for the hearing aid. In the meantime, as we all know, approximately 40% of the tinnitus patients worldwide have at least some degree of hyperacusis, which is decreased sound tolerance. This category also includes patients exhibiting phonophobia, fear or emotional reaction to certain sounds, and misophonia, dislike of certain sounds. As conducted in professional tinnitus treatment clinics, the aspect of decreased sound tolerance should be the most crucial element in proper assessments, evaluations, and treatment protocols. Then again, how many of you can say that the LDL test was performed and the results were explained to you in the hearing clinic where you went to have your so-called tinnitus assessment? I'm afraid not that many. So suppose you are dealing with a combination of tinnitus and hyperacusis, even with high levels of anxiety, especially if there is hearing loss. In that case, we want to emphasize that there is a very significant chance for successful treatment and elimination of all symptoms. We adjust the therapy and often add new elements of therapies based on the patient's needs. Also, as this is a team effort, 
Sometimes we don't know what and how we will use in the therapy or treatment besides some basic tools. Only by reviewing each case individually and talking with patients can we choose the best options for them. As long as they follow instructions, with all our expertise and experience at their disposal, we can be certain that our and patient's goals will be met at the right time. And the timeline varies. It might be a year or take longer in more complex and long-term cases. The key thing to note is that as it is a matter of time and effort, it all starts and must begin with the patient's commitment. Now, we hope you can understand why we frequently discuss DRT or tinnitus retraining therapy and why we strongly believe in its effects and value when administered properly by a truly professional tinnitus treatment. As mentioned in previous videos, it is important to note that even tinnitus retraining therapy alone requires a considerable level of proficiency. While concepts like sound therapy and habituation are well known, finding a professional with comprehensive knowledge in these areas isn't always easy in the real world. We want to emphasize that there is a very significant chance for successful treatment and elimination of all symptoms. This becomes possible when you undergo treatment that integrates all the necessary therapies provided by experienced professionals in one of the many professional tinnitus treatment clinics. So don't lose hope, just do some homework in your search. Additionally, remember that in 2024, as in previous years, many clinics have been proven successful in working with remote patients. Follow-up visits typically occur once every three months and clinics use the internet to stay in touch with patients and guide them through the process. The most crucial aspect of successful tinnitus relief is finding the right place and the right people who can provide effective help. Sometimes distance is not as important as the treatment results and relief. Once again, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel. It's where you can find answers to most of your tinnitus related questions. Our specialists with over 15 years of experience working closely with tinnitus sufferers provide valuable solutions and insights. By subscribing, you'll gain access to a wealth of knowledge and support we want to share with all tinnitus sufferers.